So, I had to change shirts, it would smell kind of funny. I'm gonna make my own brake pads. I don't know why people buy their own brake pads. I mean, guys years ago used to make their own. I looked it up on the YouTubes. They used to make them for wagons all the time. So I went down to the local hardware store and got me some oak. <laughs> Gonna make some brake pads out of oak. All we gotta do is pull the old brake pads off real quick. Got the old service truck backed in. Gonna jack her up. Watch your language. And yeah, I think you have to jack up the truck before you take the, um, the wheels off. And you guys go ahead and call my phone number all you want. Send me text messages, give me a call. It's 817-600-7221. Keep calling it. So I forgot that I had a set of tires put on this truck and on a service truck, I always refuse to get brand new tires because I go off road a lot. I go on construction sites. I get nails and screws and stuff in it. And I just hate to get a brand new tire because usually out in the field, I just stick plugs in it. And uh, I always look on Craigslist and stuff and try to find a set of tires. The last time I found a set of tires, I got these, which have actually worked really, really well. These are these Falcon tires for y'all that are uh, curious on them. Uh, last time I talked about these tires, guys in the comments, you know, really trashed these tires. I've had four different sets of Falcons and I've had zero problems and they last forever on the service truck. Uh, other tires I've tried, I've tried Goodyear's and stuff like that and, and whatever, it, I don't know if it's my driving style or what, but I'll wear them out. Anyway, I bought the set of tires, took them to a tire shop and had them swap the tires out and gave them my wheel lock and they kept the wheel lock. I went back like a week later to ask them about it and they're like, oh no, we put it in your cup holder. They didn't put it in my cup holder. Um, you know, one of the mechanics has it in their box or they saw it was like, we don't need this and threw it away, whatever they did with it. So in order to get these off, this is how retarded wheel locks are. They will keep an honest person honest. They will keep a thief um, in a fresh supply of sockets. All you really have to do is get you an 18 millimeter socket, put it on your um, wheel lock and just hammer it on like that. Now, most of the time when you do this, you are going to ruin the socket. Hence why I didn't have any 18 millimeter sockets. Set the old part brake. And that's it. Most of your wheel locks can be defeated with just hammering on a smaller socket. There are occasionally ones that you can't do that with, but, I don't think I've ever found them. And there you go. Now it's out. Um, I can probably go ahead and knock this socket out of there. I'll do that here in a minute. Um, I'll probably get the air hammer out. It's just easier with an air hammer. All you do is you stick a little punch in the end right there and just hammer her out. Hence why I bought two of them. All right, so literally like 20 seconds later, I've got both wheel locks off. Went ahead and removed the wheels. I didn't show you guys how to remove the wheels because if you can't figure out how to remove the wheels and you're probably watching the wrong channel. But I will show you how to do the brakes. So there's my grinding problem that uh, in the last video I was talking about. Uh, <laughs> I was, uh, I misdiagnosed the front. I thought it was that hub and I thought it was a clicking noise. Of course, you know, sometimes I just get in a huge rush and I decide, I'm not even gonna diagnose it, I just know what it is. I went ahead and bought the parts, pulled it all apart, put the hub on it, put it back together. It still had the same clicking sound, still had the same grinding sound. So I'm really glad that I did that job for no reason at all. Uh, all I had to do was look through the back wheel and I could have saw that it was grinding on the rear. But you know, we're all idiots at times. 
Um, and the clicking noise is coming from the front drive shaft, which makes a lot of sense because that's pretty much what broken bad U-joints sound like. <sighs> anyway, so to get this off, all you have to do is take this bolt off here, which is a 12 millimeter. There's one down here off, and then we're gonna take the, the, the caliper bracket off, which I believe is a 19 millimeter. So uh, let's get that done. to be a fantastic skilled mechanic and you really want to be successful especially with your own service truck what you got to do with the brakes is you you really got to wait until they're metal to metal just like that oh that's nice really nice see listen and when it comes to your caliper brackets you want to make sure the pins get rusty like this that way they don't fall out and get sloppy because it's brakes the more friction the better right Thirdly, you want to make sure that the caliper on the passenger side is frozen solid so it gives you a, a big pain in the butt to get it out. And make sure that your hub seal is leaking. You see how it kind of looks wet down in there? That helps lube these brake pads, these park brake shoes. It helps lube them up so it um, reduces friction. But yeah, that's, a, uh, that's the way you want to do it. So now I got to go get two caliper brackets for the rear, a seal for the hub, get to show you guys how to do a hub unexpectedly. But really, in all honesty, I'm joking around. I'm not really beating myself up too bad about this. This is kind of how service trucks go. You run the wheels off of them until you absolutely have to do some work to them, and then you do a bunch of work at once. Um, every single guy that works with themselves that I know all do the same thing. It's just out of necessity because you use your trucks every single day when you're running, you're blowing and going. But I gotta run to the store and get a new seal. Okay, so these are called full floating axles. What this is, the axle shaft actually goes all the way through here, splines into the differential, and there's no C-clip that holds it in. The wheel bearings out here take all the force, and the only thing on this axle is the rotational force. Typically on a standard axle in a car, you have the wheel bearings on the end, and then inside you will have a C-clip, so you have to take the differential cover off and um, pull the axle out. On heavier duty trucks, usually three quarter ton, one ton and bigger, they'll have a full floating axle. The three quarter tons that I've, I've seen, some of them are full floating, some of them aren't. This isn't necessarily, uh, I remember back when I was in uh, UTI, me and my roommate got in this big argument because he wanted to pull a full floating axle on his 77 Super Sport El Camino. And I kept telling him, I was like, why? It's gonna, it, it adds a tremendous amount of weight. You know, the car is already uh, super heavy. He's like, oh, well, you know, we had this argument. Anyway, I digress. Uh, it's not necessarily more efficient of a system, it's just capable of holding a lot more weight. So take these um, eight three quarter inch bolts or 18 millimeter bolts out and then um, uh, I'll show you how to get that axle loose. You're f***ing pain in a dick. All you have to do to get this axle loose just take your hammer, like that, and it'll pop loose. I don't know if y'all can see that on camera, but I can see it back here. It's already loose. You can hear a difference, and then kind of do a little tap a tap tap So I'm going to take this axle shaft. I'm going to go put some gloves on because I hate axle fluid, or uh, I hate gear fluid. It's nasty smelling. It's got sulfur in it or something. So pop this out, and we'll get that. Nut off. So this particular setup doesn't have a nut. It has this, I forget what they call this thing. It's a weird little preloaded bullcrap deal. I'll try to show you guys that. So you can see that thing in there. 
Let me get my light set up to where you can guys can actually see this thing. So all you gotta do is take a screwdriver or a chisel, preferably, stick it on here, hammer it a couple of times and it'll pop right out. All right, so get these little clips out. These are a little different than your normal clips. Just take your screwdriver, push down a little bit, grab your needle noses. <clears throat> and then a the clip will come out. Then it just come out the back. And that's what the little pin looks like. So now that we got those out, we need to take these springs off. One spring. I'll take this one off up here. Take our adjuster off. Adjuster comes out. Then usually you can get the spring out once you're at this point. Like that. So then, all we have left is this little spring on the back. Like that. And our park brake shoe is off. This park brake shoe is off. Um, this is the inner part of the seal. It's kind of like a wear ring. You can get these off in several different ways. You can cut them off, you can bend them off. So this chisel's way overkill, but take a chisel, put it right on top of there. We're here to the other side. I'm usually loosen it up enough where it'll pop off. Like that. Now our brakes are completely off. I gotta go over and do the other side. I'm not gonna film that because you guys saw how this was done. And then take all these parts and then clean them all up. So the method that I showed you to pull this nut off, um, I've used that method quite a bit and it's always worked fine. They actually make a special socket for this nut and I ended up having to buy it because I screwed this one up and then spent way too long messing with it. I'll show you guys the socket that I'm talking about. This is the socket itself. The socket fits into those little uh, keyways right there. I've always refrained from buying that socket because like I said, I've always been able just to tap it a little bit with a punch and get it off and then put it back on. I never had an issue. Um, but you know, it's always a problem. It's, it's never a problem until it is a problem and then just buy the right tool for the job. Uh, the nut really wasn't that expensive, it's like $12. Um, if you guys, I overpaid for this nut at Napa. If you guys need one, I'll put a link down in the description. description. In the next video, I'll show you exactly how to use this. Um, but tomorrow, I'm going to get that hub off. We're going to replace the wheel seal on this side, the wheel seal on the other side. I have a box of goodies over here from a sponsor. Pretty excited about. Need to go on the truck. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Put a new caliper on the side. I'll show you how to bleed the brakes by myself. And that's it. One other thing, the, hang on buddy. The gloves that I normally use, I've talked to you about these before, are these Thickster, uh, Thickster gloves. Some of you guys in the comments have asked me about these. These are the ones, I buy these off Amazon, they've been linked in the description. These have a full cuff on them and they're very thick. They're, um, these are uh, 14 mil gloves. As a comparison, the same company makes these these are a well i don't know how thick these are because they don't say but 
These orange ones work okay, they're textured, they just don't last very long and they split. I think those are like eight mil or 10 mil or something like that. I really enjoy the Fixter gloves, the blue ones that I always wear. So I'll have a link down in the description on Amazon link for this socket, a cheaper version of this socket instead of overpaying it at Napa. A link for the gloves, just in case you guys need the gloves. A link for the knocker loose. And the reason I'm putting these links in, yes, they're Amazon affiliate links. Yes, when you buy it, I get a certain percentage of that sale. It doesn't cost you a dime. That does go to help me out, helps the channel out. And it's stuff that if you buy it, it, it doesn't cost you anything. And I, I really like that, uh, that avenue because you can get on there, you can buy whatever you want, and it doesn't cost you any extra. And then I get paid for driving you over there. Also, for you guys that don't know this, if you click on that link and you go to Amazon on any of the links I provide and then go to the search and buy whatever you want to buy, buy, it doesn't matter, because that link drove you over there, I still get a percentage of whatever you bought. Some of you guys have bought some crazy stuff. <laughs> I have, um, I've made some money on some adult toys. Uh, I can't tell who bought it. I can just tell exactly, you know, I could tell what, the, what was purchased. Doesn't tell me who or anything, so don't worry. I don't, know, I don't know who did it or anything. But pretty neat way to kind of uh, make a little supplement cash, you know, on the YouTube deal without doing the advertisement and everything. But I hope you guys liked the video. I know I didn't get the truck finished. I'm gonna get it finished tomorrow. I also started another video with the front drive shaft. We had to do the front drive shaft on it. And that is about it. Can I say something now? So I'm gonna wrap it up and I'm gonna let Caleb finish up the video for us. Get up! Get out and fix something! Give a huge thumbs up. Yeah!